Okay, I am pleased to present Krzysztof Poplinski, um, who is the VP of Game Technologies, the creators of Dice Plus, where he oversees licensing and software product development. He has over 12 years of game journalism experience and has held marketing and licensing roles at Sony Computer Entertainment, uh, Polska, and CD Projekt. Krzysztof is now working towards global domination of the next generation of dice, heralded by the arrival of D+. I just had to check with Krzysztof before this uh, announcement to make sure, I'm a content strategist, uh, to make sure this wasn't a typo, but this is truly, in fact, his presentation, and I present Krzysztof talking about the evolution of evolution of dice. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Right, thank you very much. Um, first of all, Matteo, thanks for your presentation that we just saw. Very interesting. Okay, so uh, you already know that this is not, not a mistake with the evolution of evolution of, of dice. And hopefully I will get some sort of switching the slides to the side. Guys? <laughs> okay. So, uh, my name is Krzysztof Paplinski, and uh, you already know this. Um, I work for Game Technologies, which is a company that manufactures and owns the patent of Dice Plus that you might or might not be yet familiar with. So, my initial uh, question was about to, to be, what do you see here? Obviously, given the fact that we're already talking about the die, it's, it's not going to be a big surprise to say that this is, this is a physical die. The most uh, unusual response, though, and, and one that I believe is, is quite factual, would actually be to, to say that this is the world's first game controller. This is also the world's first home entertainment system. And this is the world's first multi-screen display. Uh, DICE origins uh, date back to, to Asia, actually to, to Burnt City, which is uh, located on the territory of current Iran. And it dates around 5,000 years ago. It, was, it didn't look like a, like a usual die that you, that you see here right now. It was more of a stony, more of a knuckleback kind of, kind of thing. But the one thing that it was used for was, uh, was used for gaming. Um, it can be, we can be very precise in regard to, to saying when that actually was found, because the set was, was found in a burned city. But uh, we can safely say that around 5,000 years ago, people did seem to find ways of entertaining themselves with some device that would allow for some, random in the, some randomness in their, in their gameplay. Um, from then on, die can be traced throughout history, in different parts of the world with no regard for social status, ethnicity, or religion. Uh, I don't know how many of you are actually board game fans, but just to, to give you a couple of, of quick facts, it's not only about Monopoly and Catan. It's about numbers of games which go to, right now there's probably around 70,000 board games which are accounted for. The oldest board game, per se, mm, uh, dates back to Tutankhamun's tomb, and this is something that you see here on the, on the picture to, to, to the left. Now, it didn't actually use any die. It used uh, some kind of straws, which were used to determine the, the number of fields you would move on, uh, on the checkboard. But as you can see, the, the board gaming has a pretty long history so far. But we already spoke about the dice, and we spoke about the board game. Just to, to finish on the, on the history roundup, um, the first board game that actually used dice, and it's uh, something that was actually, you can actually still play today, because it has the, the rules preserved from the, from the times before, was the royal game of Ur. It was played in Mesopotamia over 4,500 years ago. So it's called the royal game of Ur, and if you want to, after you finish with this, today's presentations, and probably some, some drinking before tomorrow, you might as well be uh, well after to, to check it out and see the game that was played before any kind of entertainment system that was ever developed or introduced. So it certainly beats all those PlayStations, Xboxes, and Nintendos you might be familiar with, and certainly it won't gather the same kind of negativity when you say you're dealing with history here. <clears throat> In terms of uh, finding out what that is, is there's, there's no prizes for guessing. Currently, after we speed up from, from the Mesopotamia 4,500 years ago, and we end up with Monopoly. That's a game that was played by over a, mil over a billion people worldwide. Uh, the origin of the game 
was uh, dates back to 20th century, beginning of the 20th century. And Monopoly is actually based on the game which is called the Landlord's Game. But actually the part, the, the game that we know right now, was introduced to, to Parker Brothers, which was, I wouldn't want to say heavily influenced by, by that, but that's what you can take from, from here. So we already know the, the die, the board games, we know the, the familiar titles that, that you see here. So in order to put some, some data into perspective, currently, as I mentioned, according to Board Game Geek, which is, I would say, the nerdy geek fans IMDB for, for board games, there's around 70,000 board games which are available to play right now. These take different forms, different ways of, of playing, but you can actually see that that's a quite big number of, of titles that you, that you have on your disposal. For comparison, there's roughly around 215,000 apps, gaming apps available on, on the App Store, according to 148 apps. So the, the curious thing to, to ask yourself right now is that how many board games got digitized? And how many board games can actually be played currently? Because as you know, that they might be, I mean, a lot of people are familiar with them. A lot of people have seen or have played um, uh, dice games. So unfortunately, for some reason, there's only around 20 games which have been digitized. You've got your Monopoly, you've got your Catan, you've got your, some, some other titles, and, and that's about it. And we tried at, at, um, at our company, we started thinking, how do we approach that and how we, do we tap into that untapped source? So, Q Workshop was started in 2003. And Q Workshop was founded by Patrick Strzelewicz, who is uh, who's also the, the founder of game technologies company that I work for right now. Uh, Q Workshop was founded in 2003, and it started off with manufacturing physical die for different tabletop and RPG systems. Uh, currently, Q Workshop is in the world's top three of uh, physical die manufacturers and suppliers worldwide. And this is, uh, this is not an area you would probably be very familiar with, but that's a pretty big feat for, for a company coming from, from Poland and starting in a small workshop based in, in, in Patrick's uh, basically basement. Well, if you can think of any kind of dice, Q Workshop has already done it or still does it. You've got your four-sided die, you've got your 20-sided die, you've got your 10-sided die, you've got your 100. I mean, as a, as a fact, the 100 dice is kind of a show-off. You don't really use that if you're playing games. You probably use two 10-sided dice. So uh, 2003 wasn't a good year to start thinking about any forms of, of connecting your, your physical device as, as, a, as a die to mobile or other TV-connected platforms. But that happened in uh, around seven years later, when uh, mobile revolution, or actually the con conquest of, uh, of our rooms, began with, with some screens which were added on top of the TV screens that were already there, on portable devices such as Game Boys or PSPs and your Macs and, and PCs that were, that were stored in your, in your home. So um, a lot of households uh, uh, on the beginning of 2010 weren't yet sure that they would really require an additional screen that would be used for all those combined media consumption ways that you see right now. But that's roughly when the work on a physical device that would connect wirelessly to your mobile device was started. And the work started initially at Q Workshop, but then it transferred around 2012 to a company called Game Technologies that I work for right now. So Q Workshop is still manufacturing their physical dice, while Game Technologies is solely responsible for the patent, manufacture, sales, and distribution of what you see here right now. This is a prototype and, and, and the insides of, of the product I'm talking about today, which is Dice Plus. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the device was supposed to use the basic functionality of the dice and relate uh, wirelessly to, to mobile connected devices via Bluetooth. And it sounds simple enough. The only thing you need to recreate is actually the role of the device, making sure that the result is displayed properly and seamlessly translated to, to the platform. Well, you would not believe how many different challenges and obstacles that 
poses in front of you. One of the first ones is that there isn't a lot of tech that is devised to be thrown around on every single time of use. So that was probably the, the, the biggest challenge that we had to overcome as a, as a company in order to bring our device to, to the market. Mm, so actually, the amount of, uh, the amount of uh, tech that needed to, to be introduced in order for, for Dice Plus to be actually viable and to actually work in a way that we would want it to work was, was putting inside this amount of tech. Um, to, to properly distinguish between accidental drops, fake crawls, uh, to make sure that actually whatever you're holding in your hand is actually not determined as a roll, but only at the moment when you release it from your hand and it drops to the table or any surface you're playing on, now, it required a lot of, a lot of information and, and a lot of uh, sensors. So we've got our accelerometer, our dual mode Bluetooth module, the magnetic field sensor, the temperature sensor, the LED displays, and 3D printed circuit board. It sounds like an overkill for a device that primarily has to be rolled on the floor and relaying the results of the rolls, but none of that is superficial. None of that is added, added just just as a means to, to actually allow you to, to have fun and just, just throw it. It's all serving with a, with a, deeper, with a deeper idea and, and to make sure that we actually get the, the, the proper results that, that we want. So the only thing which was left to figure out after we started working on a device was to come up with a name that would actually channel the, the 5,000 years of history of board games and, and die rolling and something that would actually remark at some possibility of expanding on that history of, of 5,000 years of, of playing. So the name Dice Plus was, was proposed, and this is the, the name that our product is actually under right now. The, the main thing that doesn't seem like I need to, to, to explain exactly how that came from or where that came from, but the first thing is that obviously Dice is plural, but we decided that calling any product, any consumer product Die, would not be the perfect idea. So the plus hints obviously add some extra capabilities and extra functions that Dice Plus carries over and, and allows user to, to use. Well, let's digress for a while. Um, currently, if you wanted to look at the forms of home entertainment that we all know and use for the past, let's say, 20 or 30 years, is that the first one is obviously the, the TV consumption, the second one is reading books or comic books and graphic novels. The third is listening to music. Fourth, playing video games. And the fifth, playing board games. I'm talking about the entertainment you can actually take part in at home and enjoy with your friends or on your own. So if you look at all those forms of media, some of them were digitized or, or made mobile from the get-go. Some of them are still going there. Obviously, you can watch a movie on any device you have at your home. You can watch it on your TV, you can watch it on your console, you can watch it uh, using your smart device, you can, use it, um, you can watch it using some mobile device. Uh, the same can be said about reading books and, and graphic novels. Especially given yesterday's, uh, the, the distinction is even more prominent, given yesterday's acquisition of Comixology by Amazon. Comixology is uh, one of the largest, I mean, actually it's the largest website devoted to, to selling digital graphic novels content. So all those are also available on your PCs. There, you, you can watch it on your tablets. Sometimes it's as easy as turning on your e-reader on. Well, um, listening to music, I, I don't even want to go there. We've all been listening to music in, on all forms of uh, devices that we have. And given the rise of the smart devices and, and smart wear currently, it's no brainer to see that this, this form has been already digitized to, to, to the max. I mean, video games were also always there. With your Game Boys and PlayStation, you had your portable and your home entertainment system covered. So the only thing, the only form of entertainment that's been used and that's still familiar and still present at home, the only one that hasn't moved to the digital space <coughs> is actually the, the board games. And when the, the whole work, the whole concept on Dice Plus was being worked on, this is one of the questions that we, we kept asking ourselves. If you look at, an, at the landscape of apps currently available on App Store or Google Play or any of the other 
mobile platforms, you can see that there's an abundance of every possible genre of games you can imagine. You've got your racing games, you've got your adventure games, you've got your um, logic games, you've got your puzzle games, you've got every imaginable um, genre being covered. The only one which is really underrepresented is the board games. Obviously, that might mean that they're just not wanted anymore, that no one plays board games, but it's not actually true. Mm, uh, one of the top sellers for uh, one of the digital board games that did get turned into digital form, the Monopoly, uh, sold upwards from one million units. The same happened with uh, Monopoly Millionaire. So the market is still there, but what we were thinking about was that either there wasn't a proper way of controlling those games on mobile devices, or there the whole concept of just moving the, the board games into digital space required something more. And this is something we, we started focusing on. So the, the two things we started uh, considering for, for this particular instance, for, for Dice Plus, were we needed to look at two phenomena. One was the e-reader boom, which happened on, on the market in the, in the last 10 years. And the second was social media gaming and, and the way it was perceived eight years ago. So probably all of you have heard it at some point, probably any of you, which is over seven, and I suppose some of you are, uh, probably had at some point come into contact with a book. You know, the hardcover, soft pages, the flicker of pages, and then the smell of, of paper. So people who are accustomed to actually reading books, mm, they tended to ahead of, of e-reader actually arriving on, on the market and conquering it. And, uh, people were considering uh, that books require certain special, artificial and natural way of reading them and experiencing the, the content. It didn't matter that they were not really very wieldy, they were heavy, that you needed to store them someplace. The, the whole concept of reading as, as a more of a higher form of, of uh, culture did require the, the older means of, of interacting with it. So you must have heard at some point someone, either your, your mother, your, your father, your parents, your grandparents, saying that if they don't have actual book, they don't feel like they're reading. So uh, this uh, proclamation that uh, reading requires certain specific form of, of interacting with, with content was something that did seem all the e-readers or all the, all the tablets or other devices might have a hard time working on. But then this guy came along. And suddenly it seemed that uh, there is a way of actually getting to people and finding out some, some way to, to allow them for some very intuitive and very easy user, uh, user experience when interacting with the content. Obviously, we could talk about the economics, um, the, the pricing model, the window of opportunity in regard to, to why or how the e-readers actually made their market. But what is important for, for us is that we believed, we, we focused uh, as a company on, on looking at the user interface aspect, looking at the fact that e-readers actually sacrificed a lot of uh, capabilities which are in front of all the, the devices. And they sacrificed them in order to make sure that the experience for the readers was as good, as intuitive, and as easy to, to, to navigate as possible. So the qualities that all the e-readers were actually converted by was the mm, uh, first, the content possibilities of the device. The second, the ease and immediacy of content acquisition. And the third was portability. So, all of those seem to play their part in actually turning people who are avid book readers into avid acolytes of the e-reader era. On the other hand, there's the social media, uh, or the, the social, social gaming, social gaming as it was called with the advent of Nintendo Wii in 2006. I'm not sure if you're all familiar with the landscape of when Nintendo Wii launched in 2006, but actually, the, the competitors, the Sony and Microsoft, were locked in an arms race in terms of technology and content, which was strictly geared towards hardcore gamers and people who knew their Mario's, or actually Mario's and Nintendo brand. So they knew their kill zones from their Call of Duties. But Nintendo Wii actually went, entered the market with, uh, with a machine which was inferior in terms of, techs, of, of tech spe uh, specifications. 
And it seemed initially as a very bad idea, but then it seemed that Nintendo didn't really care about all those hardcore gamers that were only waiting for the next iterations of their hardcore titles being uh, shown on the market. They basically disregarded the market of hardcore gamers and went first identified and then went after people who are not very accustomed to, to games and people who only wanted to spend some quality time with their friends and their family. So they went after motion controlled games, simple titles, simple fun games that you could share share your experience with in a room, with your friends, in short bits, or in longer periods, however you wanted. So actually, it managed to, to allow Nintendo Wii to drive past the sales of 100 million units, which is a big feat. And actually, they started a revolution that made Sony and Microsoft look in their step and try to replicate with mixed results what Nintendo Wii did on the market. So with DICE Plus, we felt that we needed to combine those two approaches. So the first one, the ease of content acquisition, the ease of use of, of the device, the portability, which is similar to, to what e-readers did to, to, to books. And on the other hand, we needed to, to look at the social gaming factor and allowing people to share their experience when they're playing with one tablet, with one device in the center, and, and sharing the experience, sharing the joy, sharing the, the feeling of being upset or, or, or cheated, or any of those feelings that actually make social interaction so interesting. So uh, in terms of, of sticking to what the e-readers did right, Dice Plus works with tablets, so the capacity of the device is already there. We have our board, which is the tablet, and we have our dice, which is the die, or I should say the other way, we have that die, which is Dice Plus. In terms of the content acquisition and the ease of content acquisition on the e-readers, uh, we came up with an app that when you purchase Dice Plus, when you acquire it, you have an instant access to, to an app which gives you further access to 20 titles, all of them multiplayer, allowing for social interaction of, of people who are, who are taking part in, uh, in gaming. And for portability, it is pretty small. Dice Plus is something you can fit in your pocket, you can carry it out in your bag with your iPad, and it's as easy as, as this. Mm, the social aspect of, of gaming is actually something that we felt is, is going to be a key factor, especially if you look at, at all the games that people are playing on their tablets right now. Currently, the, the tablet experience is very solitary. You dilute your social skills by, by playing those games, and the only emotions you can, the only person you can share your emotions with is actually you. And this can be frustrating, this can be fun, but it doesn't seem like the, the type of experience that we want to tap into, and which has been tested throughout time, 5,000 years specifically. So it's important for us to, to note that uh, when I was referring to the motion, uh, motion control and then all the other functions that were represented by, by the slide with lots of pictures and uh, with, with lots of words, uh, is that uh, the capabilities of Dice Plus are actually far more and far superior to just rolling the dice and seeing the results of the roll on your tablet. Uh, we have motion control, we have rhythm detection, shake measurement, and multicolored display. And this is only tapping into the, the initial phase of what we can do with the games and what we can do with all the titles that are, that are upcoming. So just on, on a closing note, um, our approach to, to deliver the, the new wave of entertainment, of actually reintroducing the board games to, to living room, is actually based upon the, the evolution of dice the, the 5,000 year device into something that first relays the basic function of dice as it was 5,000 years ago. But the evolution of that is the part where we're actually taking the die and given all the tech which is inside, given all the capabilities of the device, it allows you for an experience which is unrivaled for tablets and allows you for a new way of actually interacting with, with the content. All right, thank you very much.